Hey everyone, welcome back to Simpit Academy. So in the last video, we did um, instruments and these are still open panels, not covered up yet. We have some problems with transparencies, um, CMSC, the RWR, digital clock, all this. Some, these two can be replaced by LCDs. This one is a viewport only. As long as it is in VR, then we will have the transparency. Regardless of how bright this is, you can see the background. So that's the problem. Other than that, digital clock and this one, CMSC can be covered with an LCD and data exported uh, via DCS BIOS to the LCD, then um, they'll be fine. So now we have to add the MFDs, UFC, all this. Um, yeah, except for this, everything else can be covered. So today we look at the HCP and um, Hars Fast Erect and the Fuel quantity. So the idea is regardless of instrument gauges or all this stuff, you must not have the switch um, protrude um, to the back because it will cut into the monitor. So like you will see here the HCP I will show later that I raise it up quite a bit, um, like 10, 15 mm, just to avoid this. So wherever um, you have big switches, like here, this um, rotary switch, I raise this bottom half, right? Everything else is fine. So anything that we do that is um, the switch cannot be smaller or shorter i will have to raise them all right um when you're sitting in front of it it's not noticeable at all um at least to me I, and i'm not bothered by it so it doesn't have to be exactly the same okay as long as you raise it and the back is kind of flush and you put it in the monitor it's not going to you know poke into it break it or scratch it then you're fine all right, so let's get started. So HCP. Now, the way I'm doing this um, A10 is different from the F15E. At the F15E, I just guesstimated the panel and um, put the words, put the circles for the switches, everything. Um, a lot of estimation for the A A10. Um, I started with using um the Warthog Projects PDF. He has um kindly shared his PDF on the website, so it's very precise in in the sense that the panel uh width is all always five and three quarter standard uh mil spec. And also the spacing of the holes on the outside, um, they are Dezu's spacing, um, so it's standard, okay? The, the holes, you count the number of holes, you can actually determine um, the size. So anyway, his PDF, um, you start with Inkscape, you import or open the PDF, um, and you select it, all right? Now for all the cuttings, all the holes, everything, it will automatically select. You don't have to click on them, all of them. But the words, sometimes they don't translate into FreeCAD uh, properly. So um, as with the F15 uh, playlist, everything I do is FreeCAD and then 3D printed and then Arduino. Right, this is the method, uh, the simplest and the cheapest method. Same thing with the A10. So 
for the words you want to actually click you don't have to click on each letter like if you select this and click each letter it will take a long time so you just click on the group the words like this um control to select and then shift to keep adding so select this panel and then select all the words then click on path you know then there'll be an option object to path then you're good all right then you just uh save as there's no export like gim just save as uh svg okay um you might have more than one panel because i suppose romu kilo um the warthog project guy i think he has additional panels like the light panel i don't use light panel i don't do backlighting so this is just the front panel this is the the light panel so okay next you import the svg you click new all right click new click import and then you get all this stuff so whatever you select it will highlight green so you want to pick you want to scroll down and pick the right ones that will select all the holes the corner holes the the holes for the switches and also the outline for the panel group them together okay you in freecad you go to draft now a lot of the things um i'm doing here it's um the same as how i did the f15e which i have gone through in a lot more detail so watch those um uh, earlier the videos if you find that this one i'm going a bit fast so anyway in freecad you go to draft workbench um, you select a bunch of them and you click this one it will group them into a sketch okay um, next you group this that are not using okay you delete them then some more that you want to group um, as text right you want to separate from the cutout the the cutout you want to pad down and then the text you want to pad up so this one you i highlighted uh all the text if you have a lot of text like this actually it's very detailed you know letter by letter this might take too long to group it might time out or even crash so you may have to group you may have to do like row by row you know at least split into three or four groups sometimes the inkscape um tracing has errors um one of them may fail then the whole thing will fail so doing in groups might be better all right so the default um, circles are the outside one i added new circles in order to center it according to these four um, points here once i center it i'll delete the outer ones because the size of my toggles are smaller than the one in the pdf uh, same thing here so all for everything i add uh, circles and i center them then i um delete the outer ones okay once all, all these are set up so in my earliest videos i went into detail about all kinds of switches here where in this panel we're just dealing with toggles right big toggles small toggles so even for potential meters encoders push buttons depending on the size you want to know the size of the shaft hole uh, if you keep using the same one, you just determine once and then whenever you use it again, just look up, okay, document it as a reference. So like this small toggles, is, the shuffle is 6mm. Uh, I don't use uh, locking ring for small toggles. They don't really turn much. And then the big ones, I have the a, a locking ring, right? So, and then you want to have a recess at the bottom as well for the nut you know to sit then the top panel can sit on top of it this is the back panel so things like this so determine all these sizes which i went into detail in my earliest videos um if you 
if you have questions, look at them. I think I covered everything. So next is the, we determine the size. So you click on all the circles, the smaller ones, right? And then click on a size and you'll set the size for all of them. Okay, you click on the dots to align them like horizontally or vertically, but you click on the ring, the, the circles on the outside to set the size. This is the diameter, not radius. Okay, all the all these have 12.5 mm for the big toggles. The small ones, we'll see here, the small ones, see I've deleted the original lines that got traced from Inkscape. I set small ones and then I make them align horizontally or level and then I set six. So all the these three small toggles have six uh, shelf size. So the corners, these are to bind, um, secure the top panel. This is the top panel, right? The back panel or back plate will have um, different kind of screws. So this is to screw the top panel to the back plate later. And I always use the 3.6 mm whole size. Okay. The back plate ones, the outer one will be those socket uh, screw uh, M4. That will be bigger. So I, depending on your screws and your switches, whatever, all this may be different, all right? So don't blindly, like it, there are some companies, some people are selling panels, especially the ATM panels online. So if you buy those panels, they are pre-cut to, uh, with the assumption of certain switches. So if you buy them and then you get the wrong type of switches, it's not gonna fit. It's gonna be too big or too small. So you need to customize the switches to the panel to your type of switches okay so next um uh, i mentioned about reverse pad so the first sketch that we did we grouped um the outline and all the holes you per you pad you click this right you click this um sketch you have to move it Everything that you create is on the outside. You have to create a body and then move the sketch into the body. And then you click pad. But this time you click reverse, it will pad down. Okay. If you pad up, you will cover all the text. Pad down. Then later we select this uh, sketch for all the text and we pad up. Okay. So more about the bottom recess so this is how it works this is the back plate right this is where you you need a screw a nut below the locking ring okay else you'll fall out and it will it will uh, fall out of the groove that hold it in place and it itself hold the nut uh, the whole toggle in place so Basically, you need a nut below and then this, you make a, 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 a lock ring hole, okay, to hold the whole thing for the back plate. Then the top panel, you always need the bottom recess for the nut, okay. You'll see that um, big toggles need a bigger, this is the size of the nut, okay, uh, actually slightly bigger than the nut, then, then when you Put the top panel over okay um you will be able to fit okay so this is the best practice for big toggles that sometimes rotate with a lock ring it will stay in place all right so this is how it looks like the top panel this is the bottom of the panel and the nut will be sitting on top of the back plate. So now regarding text, if you select text and pad, okay, if it works, then everything will protrude up. If it doesn't work, then you break them into groups like this one. 
I break it into this group here okay and then you pad um, you see it goes up like this so more um, another group here another group here I keep dividing into half um, till I have no error there was an error that prevented everything from happening is because of the D all right this D there was a problem sometimes um, when you trace um, either the lines don't there are many dots especially at a curve like this there are many many dots sometimes the dots don't link which will cause an error sometimes they overlap um, and that also cause a problem then if you spot it then you can uh, fix it okay sometimes it's very hard to spot to find which ones there are hundreds of points then you may have to just delete the whole thing and create your own text you'll be faster okay if you are not particular about the kind of font you the, the the font here looks nice but I just use um, very often I just use my own uh, Arial font um, just because um, like this one actually the sizes here are too small to print I printed a couple of times even uh, very fine quality it, it, it's just too small to print this is like 3 mm uh, height which is too small I need at least 4 mm uh, ideally 4.5 and sometimes the very big words I do like 6 all right so um, I actually reprinted on a thin piece uh, half mm and then put the words on top okay this whole thing here so I had I had to redo all these small fonts so all these additional ones are not needed all these holes are for the backlighting uh, for LED lights so I delete them okay this is the back plate so we are done with the front okay so now the back plate um, you import again trace in Inkscape um, import this delete all the unnecessary ones so you don't get confused with all the holes you need the corner holes you need all these toggle holes right and this one for the socket so again now we're left with only the ones we want we click on this it will create a sketch all right then we resize okay the 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 big one you see the allen socket head is like this okay this is uh, m4 so this is 4.3 so the four corners for 4.3 and then these four corners inner corners are these kind of screws um i think this is imperial not not metric this is maybe 632 or something so anyway it's the hole that that fit very nicely is 3.6 so to secure the top panel to the back plate all right then again add the circles because the the original ones on the outside are too big so i always add my own center this against the four and then delete the other ones all right so you see the the black ones are deleted original circles so again big toggles 12.5 small toggles 6 um, and um, okay for the lock ring it's always um 9.8 mm for the big toggles nine point this distance right this is the lock ring hole this it's 9.8 mm from the center of the big circle and the size itself is three so all these have uh dime have diameter three mm and 9.8 from the center okay same thing here all this you just repeat then we are 
almost done. We need to create a fence. Okay. And then raise it up. So because the toggles um, distance will, if it's not sitting flush, it will protrude too much to the back uh, and poke into the monitor. So I have to build a fence and raise the height of the back plate. Okay. So normally a back plate is 3 mm. Okay. So I added this fence, bring it up to give the body of the toggle some height clearance so that it doesn't protrude out too much. Okay, then the back will be flush against the monitor. Okay, some of the panels you have to do this. Whenever you have a monitor in the back. So we are done with all the panels and this is BIOS. Again, you, sh you guys sh doing this should learn. This is BIOS is easy. The code is all written for you. Do you just determine which pins you're wiring to the board? Okay, put in the pin numbers. Um, upload the um, sketch. Okay, and then you are done. So next, um, the hard fast erect. Again, Inkscape. Um, I did not highlight the text because the text is too small. Yeah, just select this, it will give you the cutout. Import this, select the right ones um, for as holes, right? This one is going to be a line. These are, uh, you separately group this uh, as lines to, to emboss, to pad up, okay? So this uh, few components here, you select them, you group them as a sketch. Then you select this one as another sketch. Okay. So, and then we change the size. This is the size of my push button. Okay. The shaft size of the, the push button shaft. So 7.2 and then these are the screws 3.6 again. Okay. And this is what you get you this one you raise the the ring the line okay it comes up this is the hole for the button right and then at, at a at a recess of uh, 16 mm for the nut of the push button all right then this is for the back plate we make it big enough for just for the whole push button to be able to go through uh, this time no lines, whatever. Then we add in DCS BIOS one pin and we are done. So next the fuel panel again, um, select all the text else um, in Inkscape. You don't select them, they won't come in to FreeCAD. So once you're in FreeCAD, you select all the cutouts and group them. For the text and the lines, we need to split into half. I'm going to raise the bottom up, right, to give clearance for the rotary switch. So we group, we do this in one group, we do this in another group. So first the cutout as one sketch, then the top um, group as another sketch. Uh, I call it the top line and the bottom line. So this second group. So now we set all the holes. These are all the standard 3.6 holes. This is the 11 mm hole for the push button. Now for the text, the original text, um, they failed and you can see each letter has so many points. I'm not going to click and move each one of them to see which one is wrong. It will take hours. So I basically just deleted and created my own text. All right, so if you create the lines and the text properly and pad them, this is how it looks like. So the bottom, I'm raising it up, as I mentioned, raising it up 8 mm. 
okay then have a the hole for the shaft of the rotary switch okay and then here this one i'm using the special uh, nerd rotary switch from aliexpress right um, as mentioned in the f15 series it, I'm, i always use this it's easy um, to set the directions to mount the uh, the knob so but the problem is 60 is original a lot of the panels they are 45 angle so if it's 30 30 30 all this you have to do your own text and arrange them so to do so you first need to put you know draw these lines and they don't show at all see they are not visible if you don't pat them they are flat and they don't print so you do this just as a reference to align and then you also want to add this you know these markers stuff um you have to draw them <clears throat> and then when you pat you will pat pat up like this okay and like these lines so then you want to add text okay one two three four five six seven eight like this um it doesn't wrap so create all this pad then this is how it looks like then um at the bottom we after you pad um if the bottom hole disappear you want to create it again and then cut it through and the bottom holes then um in all to save the pla i basically hollow up okay if not you'll be like very thick this is already 6 mm and you pet another 8 mm um at the bottom there's nothing except for the rotary switch so and also because we raise it right so instead of recessing this i recess the whole chunk okay then we still have to recess a bit um, for the body to sit in further up okay so two rest recesses this is the push button this is the rotary switch and then you create a hole for the lock ring uh, this is 3.5 it can be 3 oh no for toggle lock ring is 3 for the rotary switch lock ring is bigger it's 3.5 so anyway the last thing to do is to add two rings um and then pad it up okay you look like a be bezel same thing for this this is um 3 mm white this is 4 mm white slightly thicker okay and then pad and we are done for the three panels that we are looking at today okay oh one more thing is the back plate so delete all the holes you don't need and adjust the holes corner holes the cut out the shaft and pad right so this has to be big enough for the body of the rotary switch to go through and this for the push button to go through and these are just gauges right that's it now let's take a look how um, they look like um, in VR all right we have this front console looking more complete now um, instruments MFDs um, just added the HCP uh, and the fuel quantity as explained in the PowerPoint slides before um, I raised the height of the of this panel because of the height of the toggle switches um, to avoid poking into the monitor everything here has to be raised up if the switch height um, it's it's high and you cannot just let it sit too close to 
um, the base, it will poke into the monitor. So, and I also mask the uh, panel here, right? You don't see this and the NMSP, you don't see the background. So all these gauges you can still see a bit. Um, now, in the previous video, I mentioned about wanting to build my own MFDs for a bigger display. I basically got lazy and didn't want to build them. I just put Cougar, cut out um, two holes and call it a day. All right. Um, this is very uh, easy. So this one is the brightest and transparency is the viewport. So um, you cannot do anything about it. For this one, CMSC, you can export the data uh, via uh, DCS BIOS. Same thing with the digital clock. If you export it to uh, some OLED or LCD, then you won't have the transparency. All right, this is the only one that is a problem. Um, the good thing about the MFDs is they don't have transparent background like the F15E, which um, is very disappointing. So the A10, the F18 have um, proper MFD backgrounds that is readable, and MFDs are, I think, the most important. All these instruments are occasionally you know just back up right but you operate um mfds and hotels with that and occasionally the ufc right with this you can you can do most of the flying and controlling uh weapons whatever occasionally master arm stuff like that but look around the um the virtual world around us whether it's on the ground here or up in the air. And then whenever you need to operate something important, which is most of the time in the front console, um, besides hotels and MFD, some of the stuff you, you, you do it here. And this is mixed reality. This is um, the, the ultimate way of um, flying. And uh, as soon as this is complete, this is complete and I'll be adding the uh, UFC as well. Then we have most of the panel. Now this one will be doing two, um, the flaps. So the flaps, I do not want to raise up everything. I have to raise some of them because of the switches as well, the, the thickness. But if I raise the whole thing, this gauge will be too far away. So this one, I'll leave it alone and whatever necessary, I'll raise them to avoid poking into the, the monitor. All right. As you can see, uh, with DCS BIOS, you can operate switches and see the, the changes. Um, this is fun. And even this one, like, okay, this, some of this you can't tell, but if you turn off this, you know, turn it back on, you can, you can tell. All right. So this is, um, this is the best combination, uh, mixed reality with uh, pass through. So, um, till next time I add some more panels. Thank you guys for watching.